In this presentation, we're going to add the credit card bank feed information into the financial statements. In other words, we uploaded it last time with a CSV file. Now it's in the system, but we need to categorize that information to properly put it in its proper place on the financial statements. Get ready because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are on our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement, going down to the reports down on the left-hand side. Opening up the balance sheet, once open, we're going to go to that tab up top, right-click on it, duplicate that tab. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to go on down to the reports once again. Now we're going to do the same thing for the income statement, the profit and loss, p &L. opening it up. Once open, we're going to right-click on the tab up top, duplicate that tab. So we have our information. We're going to go back to the tab to the right. We're going to be adjusting the date, putting the date back to 2019 because that's when we put the information into the system. Update that date. Go on down to the bottom and show the details of the report. Then we're going to go on to the income statement. We're going to do the same process here, bringing this on to the 2019. Update the report. Go down to the bottom. Show the details there as well. Now we have the uncategorized income here and we have the uncategorized expenses, which we are now going to categorize. So we're going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to do that by going into the accounting information, transactions, and we're looking at the, the bank feed information. Those is showing all accounts right now. I just want to show the bank accounts. So I'm going to select the drop down, pick the bank account information. Now we're just going to go through this and categorize it. I'm going to do this in a quick fashion because this is basically the same type of information you had for the bank feeds uh, as we go through here. So I'm going to go in and categorize this. And so I'm going to say, here's Edison. And I'm going to go down and say that uh, Edison should go to utilities. So I'm going to say utilities. I'm going to pick that up. No note the accounts are already set up. We may have to still go back in here and add them. I'm, I'm going to add the vendor if we have it. So I'm going to say Edison is going to be uh, in here somewhere. Didn't we? There it is, Edison. Uh, so it should be easier to do because note we have the vendor and we have the uh, account, but we still ha typically have to go in. It's not going to memorize the transactions uh, as easily possibly. Notice it found another one. And so this, it does do well. If, there, if And this is really nice if you have a whole like m a year's worth of transactions or something. It's going to say, hey, look, there's another one that has the same one. So we're going to say, yeah, let's, t let's take a look at that one. And then let's categorize it. And I could categorize them all at the same time. It's going to utilities. That's what we want. Let's mark it and say, yeah, there you go. We appreciate that. So that makes it a little bit easier to, to, uh, to work through these. Then we have, so Edison is done. I'm going to check that one off. Verizon, I'm going to check off Verizon. And I'm going to say that, uh, let's go on down and put that to the telephone. Telephone. And I'm going to put it to the landline uh because yeah we still use the landline i know i know that's weird but we have it there and then that's going to be a verizon and then save that one then we've got the home depot depot of the home and i'm going to select that one and we'll put that one just to office supplies i'm going to pick that one up oh it found another it found the other verizon one so i'm going to say let's do that let's check that one out because it's helping us out there and we'll let it help us out so I'm going to say that's going to the right one. Let's mark it as done and apply that. So it memorized that for us. So then we'll go back on over. And then we're going to go to the, uh, did I do the Office Depot? Office Depot. No, I didn't do it yet. So I'm going to do that one. It's going to go to Supplies. So we'll take that to Office Supplies. And then the vendor, if I pick up, I think I have Office Depot in here somewhere. Do I have Office no, I don't have one. I'm not going to add a new supply. We should add a new vendor here, but I'm just going to keep it as is. I'm going to save it. And then uh, it found another one for that. So I'm going to ah, let's pick that one up. This is saving a lot of time. And then I'm going to say categorize it, mark it as being complete, apply that. And so there we have it. I'm going to go back to our data again. And so office, this one is checked off. We did that one. And then uh, Frank's Grill. All right, well, let's do Amazon. Let's say that's supplies too. I'm going to go into Amazon. I'm going to go on down and say Amazon. We're going to put that into supplies. Now, Amazon's one of those areas where, you know, it's hard to tell what we spent money on an Amazon for. A lot of stuff there. So that's one of those vendors that are kind of tricky. You got to you got to check it out uh, and make sure you're categorizing correctly with it. So I'm going to save that one. 
check it off. Now, Frank's Grill. Now, just want to give an example of what if there's something on the credit card that's for personal use, you know, and that could be the case if, if someone goes out to eat or something like that, and possibly it's not a business expense or business meals and entertainment, business meals, uh, but it's into uh, personal. Well, uh, normally you do want to separate the credit cards, have a personal and a business for that kind of uh, activity. However, we can go into the, the information here and assign it as basically a draw. So let's do that. If that were the case, then we say, hey, this was personal. What are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to go into it and we're just going to say, let's put it not to meals and entertainment, an expense or something like that, but an equity account. So we want to be down here, equity account. See if we can find an equity uh, liabilities. Here's the equity. So we want to put it into owner investment and draws. Owner investment and draws. That way it won't affect the income statement and it'll basically be similar or kind of like the same thing as if they took money out and, and took it, put it into draws on the equity section and then spent it on uh, the meals and entertainment. Now you really want to take the money out as much as possible because that'll make the, the connection or the cutoff between business and personal easier. However, if you don't do that and you go through the line items, you can take the line items out and post them to, to draws and, uh, and, and separate them out in that fashion. All right, so there we have that. I'm gonna check it off. And then we have the payment that happened down here. Now this is kind of the most tricky type of thing because where did this payment come from? It came from the uh, checking account where we're also gonna have bank feeds. So on the checking account, then we're gonna have a bank feed that's gonna show money going out for the, the uh, 250 to pay off the credit card. And on the credit card statement, we're gonna see this 250 as a, as a payment on the credit card side of things. So, uh, you know, if, so we, we gotta basically, uh, you know, reconcile the, these two things. Now, I could assign this to the, to the checking account. And then when the bank feed comes in, kind of match it out. I, oftentimes I'll put it to another account though. I'll put it to like a clearing account. So I'm gonna create like a credit card clearing account and what'll happen is then I'm gonna put my payment here to reconcile the credit card statement. The other side's gonna go into the clearing account. Then when I get the bank feeds from the bank, it's gonna show the 250 coming out of the bank. And the other side, I'm also gonna to put to this clearing account. And then the clearing account will match the two out and they'll wash out and be back to zero. That's what I mean by a clearing account. So that's what, that's what I would practice doing. Let's see what that would look like. I'm going to select this item. We're going to say that this is the payment that we made and I'm going to set up another account down here. So I'm going to, I'm going to go on down. I'm going to add another account. I'm going to see if they let me make it like a credit card type of account because I want it to be next to the credit cards. So we'll put it into the other short term liability. That'll work. Other short term liability. And I'm going to call this the credit card clearing account like that. And then I'm going to save that. And so then let's uh, go ahead and save that. Let's see what this will look like. So I'm going to check that one off. And so that looks good. So we've got everything checked off. Let's see what happens to the old financial statements. So I'm going to update uh, the financial statement on the balance sheet and then scroll on down. And uh, we have our credit card account there. There's the 663 from the transactions. And then here's the 250. So the 250 is in the credit card clearing account. And then once, once it comes out of the checking account, like once I see the bank feed for the checking account, if it was to be paid out of the checking account, the checking account would go down. And then the other side, we're gonna put to a debit to this 250, which would match out and make it go back down to zero. So whenever you have like two accounts that have a bank feed and like an inter, an inter, feed, an inter account feed, you know, type of transaction, then you may wanna set up a clearing account. I think that's an easier way to kind of see those two transactions. And I, I would set it up as, as a balance sheet account as opposed to an income statement account because the income statement accounts are temporary accounts and they'll close out to retained earnings. So you'll have some funny, you know, if, if it something that crosses over the year end, uh, it, it'll be more difficult to deal with. It won't, the account won't stay there, it'll close out. So I would put it on uh, a balance sheet account. Then I'm gonna go back over to the income statement. Let's see what happens to the old income statement, the PNL, the good old profit and loss. And we're gonna scroll down and we see that this, uh, you know, the other miscellaneous income is now gone now because we've allocated that payment out, that 250 payment was allocated out and the or the expenses or the uncategorized expenses are now categorized. So we've categorized the expenses out. So that looks good. That what we don't have, however, if I go back to the balance sheet, if I go back to the balance sheet, 
we don't have the uh, the Amex tying out to the the statement, the Amex statement. Now remember, when you look at an Amex statement, like a or or any credit card statement, it's a little bit confusing because the most prominent date will not be usually the end of the statement period. It'll be like the, when the amount is due because they want their money, right? And so you you gotta be you know just be aware that you, what you're looking for is the period end. Look for the period end date, like the period the end of the month date. That's where the balance should be at the end of the period. And then you're going to have to make a payment on it. So this is the balance as of the end of the period. If you paid 500, then what, what should be in the balance after you make that payment is going to be this amount minus, you know, the 500 payment that you make. Okay, so also note that we entered some credit card information in May because of what we're imagining our bank feed went, went across the month, right? We had some bank feeds in April and some in May. So if I want to see what happens in uh, April, I got to go to our, our drop down here and bring this on back to April. So I'm going to bring this on back to April and we'll make it April 30th. Update that. And then if we scroll down, we're going to see that we have uh, the 250. So that's going to be the balance right there, the 250. And it doesn't match this amount, the 1,250, because we don't see the beginning balance in it yet. We didn't add the beginning balance like with the first bank statement. We're imagining here we set up the first credit card statement and we haven't included that beginning balance in there. And so when you do the first one, oftentimes that's the case. You got to do that in order to reconcile. Once done, it should be all good going forward at that point. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.